And then um, on Wednesday, we're going to start the last section for the class, which is um, it's just a bunch of different, it's like a, a bunch of different reactions that we're going to look at. So, but I want to get a jump start on that because it's a lot of material and I want to try to cram it into two weeks. So, um, so yeah, we got, we, we're going to start that on Wednesday. And then the exam for NMR, the last section we covered will be Friday. Um, let's see. All right. <laughs> so we've already talked about some characterization techniques. We talked, I think, pretty, uh, pretty fair amount about NMR. And so we're going to talk about mass spec today. Uh, we already did in the mark. This is a, actually another presentation I gave to uh, food and nutritional uh, food and nutritional sciences class. But anyway, so the methods we talked about already. We talked about infrared, uh, being able to help you identify functional groups, and, and we talked about UV, uh, being able to help you identify whether there are conjugated pi systems present, and then mass spec, which we're going to talk about today. Uh, tells us about the size and molecular weight of, of a compound. And of course, we already talked about NMR, which gives us the carbon hydrogen framework and the different types, right? We only talked about proton NMR, but I did mention to you that there are other types like carbon 13, uh, fluorine, silicon, even uh, where the 2H is, that's for deuterium NMR. All right, so we've already seen the infrared spectrums. Let me skip through that. Uh, this is what a mass spectrum would look like uh, from a mass spectrometer, and we're gonna we're gonna have a chance today to understand like what all of this stuff means, what the numbers mean, what the x-axis is, the y-axis, all of that. Um, so we and we've already done NMR. So let me that's a, and that's an example of a UV uh, vs spectrum. So for mass spec, this is like. Uh, another characterization method. And these are some typical mass spec instruments, right? The, the big one on the top left up here is a kind of an older mass spec. And then these, uh, these instruments have gotten smaller and smaller. We actually have a mass spec, um, a fairly sophisticated mass spec in Armstrong. Uh, and we have, uh, there's portable mass spectrometers. You see, you've seen these probably uh, they don't do it as much as they used to, but when they used to take uh, and swab your bag and then take the swab over to this instrument, that was that's a type of mass spectrometer. Like in the airport, when they swab your bag and they're looking for like, when they were really looking for like explosives or uh, traces of explosive elements and things like that, they swab your bag and then take it to the this instrument, which is like a portable mass spectrometer. And there's even miniaturized mass spectrometers uh, now on a chip. And I I actually remember as a postdoc at the University of Maryland after I finished at Carolina, I went to a conference dealing with the development of this technology of the uh, miniaturized mass spec. And now it's actually a real thing, like it's a real, uh, you know, application. People actually use these miniaturized mass spectrometers. So, um, so what do we use mass spec for? We use it to identify unknowns. We use it to quantify known compounds, explosive detection. Uh, we just talked about that with the airlines, crime scene investigation. So, like chemical fingerprints. And I always say the same thing when I talk about this. Like when if you watch like NCIS or any of those like crime shows. Anytime they're in the lab and you see a person in a little white lab coat kind of hunched over an instrument and they got the screen on the side with all the spectra on it, <laughs> more than likely they're doing mass spec on some chemical that they found at a crime scene or something like that. 
uh, you can also use it to detect like contaminants or toxins and samples. Uh, it's very, very accurate as far as being able to detect the molecular weight of a compound. So this is a very rudimentary setup of how mass spec works. So you have your sample, which is here, and then you run your sample past the ion source. Normally that's uh, gonna be an electron beam, uh, something that with enough energy to cause that sample to fragment. And then when those fragments are, are formed, they pass through a mass analyzer, which gives you the molecular weight or the atomic mass of each fragment. And then those that data goes into a detector and then it comes out in the form of a spectrum, All right? This is actually a lot simpler than uh, NMR, in my opinion, uh, because all, the only thing that happens, the way you think about this, is you take a molecule, you beat it to death, like if it was made out of some material. Uh, this is analogous now, because I'm not talking about materials, but if, you, it was a, if it was a material and you were able to shatter it into pieces, that's what mass spec does. It takes a molecule and it shatters it into multiple fragments and those fragments get analyzed in the mass analyzer. And then the mass of each fragment is detected and then you're able to see that in a spectrum. So the way it works, this is this lightning bolt here is my little depiction of an electron beam. So that's the electron beam is bombarding this sample, right? And then at some point during that bombardment, the sample is gonna lose an electron. So that's that little blue dot is like the loss of electron. I wouldn't let one electron. So once that happens, you get to this species, which is called a radical cation. You can see it has one unpaired electron and a plus charge. So it's a radical cation. That radical cation is what gets fragmented. It's not the original molecule, right? Once you lose that <clears throat> electron and you get here, this is the molecule that's gonna get fragmented. So let's just say for instance, we fragment that and we break it up into a proton and a methyl radical, right? So we were here and then constant bombarding with that electron beam breaks that molecule up into fragments. So you have a proton over here and the methyl group over here. So what happens in this case is the fact that it was a radical cation. When you break it apart, one of, one of those fragments becomes the radical and the other fragment becomes the cation. That's, that's just how that works, right? So in this case, the methyl group becomes the radical and then the proton here becomes the, the cation. So in a, and if we were to summarize that, so you have your electron beam that bombards with the sample, the sample ejects an electron, just one. Uh, the sample becomes a radical cation, and then the radical cation fragments into pieces. So if we would if we were looking at this, right, the mass of this would be 16 grams per mole. When when it fragments, when the, it becomes the radical cation and fragments, right? Let me go back to here. The radical cation is still 16 grams per mole, right? When it fragments, you get a fragment that's 15 and one, right? And that's how you that's how you approach mass spec. Your fragments have to add up to the original mass. So they have to be at least some derivative of the original mass, right? So the CH3 is 15 grams per mole. The hydrogen is one gram per mole like that. So just be thinking about that when we look at the examples that we're gonna see. All right, so in a mass spectrum, which is pictured over here, on the x-axis is mass over charge and normally the charge is plus one so really it's just the mass right and on the y-axis is relative abundance so how much of that is present so right so in the, in the spectrum you have your base peak which is the tallest peak probably the most stable fragment that you create and then you have a couple of other peaks that we need to know about. The parent peak, which is the mass of the compound, right? If your compound weighs 100 grams per mole, the parent peak is gonna show up at 100 on the x-axis. If it weighs 10 grams per mole, the parent is gonna show up at 10 on the x-axis. So the x-axis is gonna be mass, right? 
So the parent peak in this spectrum is here, 46. All right, so then you have your parent peak. We also call it the molecular ion peak. That corresponds to whatever your compound is. Prior to it breaking up into any fragments, it's gonna be uh, for the, the, the molecular weight, all right? So in this case, we have uh, three, four or five compounds, right? Formic acid, uh, one propanol, ethanol, methanol, isopropyl alcohol. So I want one person to look up the molecular weight for formic acid. I want one person to look up uh, the molecular weight for <coughs> one, uh, one propanol. I need somebody to look up ethanol, methanol, and isopropanol. All right, and when you, I'm gonna switch to my iPad because I think it'll be more beneficial. Uh, to actually go through this and be able to see the samples. So I'm gonna, let me take a, I'm gonna take a picture of the screen first so we, I can have the spectrum and then we're gonna annotate it. All right, anybody got formic acid yet? Nobody. I know Except you got molecular weight, oh. right? Yeah, the molecular weight of formic acid. I missed forty six zero three. Forty six point zero three. All right. Let me let me switch over to to my hotspot right quick because I don't need no hassle from this uh, laptop. So let me stop sharing. I'm gonna switch over to my hotspot here. So you said formic acid is 46.03, yes? Yes. And that looks like this. So it's uh, H, hold on, O, O, H, 46.03 grams per mole. What about uh, one propanol? Anybody got that? You know, Google, Google is not shut down today, so. And then we got ethanol. Uh, one propanol is 60.09. Thank you. Ethanol is also about 46.03 grams per mole. And then uh, methanol. That's uh, 15 and 17, that's gonna be 32 grams per mole. And uh, isopropanol, which is this. Come on, Russell. Anybody got isopropanol? Is that, isn't that also 60? 60? Yeah, this is 60.1. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna say 60.1. Thank you, Grants for okay. All right, so on the spectrum, oh, let me crop this out and make it look a little more decent. Because right now it's kind of crappy. The 
could have taken a better picture, but if we could. All right, so in the spectrum, hopefully y'all can still see that. We got peaks at 15. We got peak at 29, a peak at 31, 45, 46, and then 47. Are y'all following that? So we got we got all of these peaks showing up. Each one of these peaks, with the exception of the parent, is a fragment. It's, a, it's either a fragment or there's, there's one other peak that shows up that I need to tell you about, and that is the M plus one peak. So that is the mass plus one. <laughs> it's that simple. So it's the mass plus one. So if the mass is 50, the M plus one is gonna be 51. If the mass is 100, the M plus one is going to be 101, right? So in this particular case, the parent peak is 46. That's my parent, all right? So what is the M plus one peak in this spectrum? If the parent is 46, we got to do some math now. If the parent is 46, what is the M plus one peak? in this spectrum. Anybody? It's 47, right? Because the mass is 46, that's the parent. So the mass plus one is gonna be 47. So you can see right here, that is your M plus one peak. It's an isotope peak. So it takes in, into account uh, the molecule with a carbon 13 isotope, right? The only time you see something different, well, not the only time, but there's another peak, an M plus two peak, that, uh, but you only see that when you have halogens present. So M plus one is always going to be present. And then the parent is always going to be present. All right. So if the spectrum, the parent is 46, which compounds can we rule out that, that this spectrum will not correspond to? Right, what can we rule out and say there's no way that this compound matches this spectrum? Because all we're looking at is, is the mass. Would it be like the ones below 40? Okay, so anything uh, below the parent, yes, right? Because if the, let's say methanol, for instance, if methanol, if this was the spectrum for methanol, the parent would be what? It will be 32. Am I right? So it's 32 because it's the longest. Okay. That's the mass. Okay. And so the parent will be 32, and you couldn't have anything above 32 because the parent is the molecular weight. And the only thing above that would be the parent plus one. So if, the, if this was the spectrum for methanol, those peaks out at 45, 46, and 47 couldn't exist. And you're not gonna add 13 or 14 grams per mole to methanol, that's not gonna happen. It's the, it's the molecular weight, the molecular weight plus one and anything be, be, below that, which would be a fragment, all right? So it can't be methanol because the spectrum goes out way past the molecular weight of methanol, all right? What else could could it not be? One propanol. Propanol, good. Can't, can't be that either, right? Or isopropanol, which is just an isomer of propanol, can't be that either because the mass is 60. And if you look at the spectrum, the upper limit is 50. 
right? So you don't have anything showing up at 60. So there's no way it could, this mass could, could correspond to a compound that had a molecular weight of 60 grams per mole. Does that make sense? All right, so what we're left with now is formic acid, which is up top. And ethanol. Those two are, are the, the more most closely related to the spectrum. Right, so now that we know which one the spectrum could be, we need to look at each of those molecules and the fragments that they create. All right, so let's start with formic acid. And we said the, the molecular weight of formic acid was 46.03. So we see a peak at 46 in the spectrum. Am I right? Yes. Okay, so that's good. We also see a peak at 47, which is the M plus one peak. You, all, you will always have that isotope peak. And if you look at the spectrum, it's really small, right? You can barely see it. And that's because the natural abundance of that carbon-13 isotope is very low, right? Um, so that's that. So let's look at formic acid first. Go back to my black pen. All right, so let's take formic acid. One thing you can do is one fragment that, that's quite possible is to chop off hydrogen right here. If you do that, you're going to get two fragments. You're going to get this. And let's, let me make, keep this consi <coughs> consistent. <coughs> this is my radical cation. So over here, I'm going to have a hydrogen. And then I'm going to have my formate radical. Let me fix that up. All right. Now, how much is hydrogen again? All right, one gram per mole. What would that what would that formate have to be? If the mass over here is 46. 45. Gotta be 45. That's common sense, right? It's 45. Let's add it up and see. You got hydrogen, that's one, two oxygens, that's 32. Is that right? And then one carbon, that's 12. So that's 45 grams per mole. And, and you do see that peak, right? You see it here. Is that right? Yeah. Now, look at the base peak. The base peak is 31. Let me, let's do the other fragmentation pattern for uh, formic acid. Let's chop it on the other side. Let's chop it right here. Because right, that's all this is, is breaking a molecule up into pieces. So if we did that, we would have a hydrogen radical. And I'll, I'll make sure that this is all on the same page when I post these notes. And then you'll have a cation. Right there. Again, this is one, that's 45. Are we, are we following so far? And then we're gonna break it one other way. And then we're gonna see if, the, if we can match the fragments up to the spectrum. If they don't all match, then we gotta go a different route. So we can also break it here. So you'll be left with uh, this. And I'm gonna make that the cation and the oxygen radical, well, OH radical. Right, that's 17, and this will be 29. Everybody okay with that? Because the fragments have to add up to the mass now. Right? It can't be anything else.
Yes, no, somewhat. Yes, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's look at the spectrum. We got a peak at 29, that's true. We also have a peak at 45. But we, we got this peak at 31 that we can't account for with any of these fragments, right? The, all the fragmentation that we are able to do on formic acid is shown here. Uh, we can match the peak at 29. We can match the peak at 45 and the parent. But look at the base peak, which is the most abundant fragment in the spectrum. There's no fragment here that I could, that I could generate that's going to be 31 grams per mole. Does that, are y'all following that? Yeah. Yes. So what what does that mean for formic acid? Does what does that mean for the spectrum? It can't be the spectrum for formic acid. Because I don't have I, I'm not able to make and generate all of the peaks. And even down here, the peak at 15, I have no way of getting that fragment from formic acid. So I got I have to rule out formic acid. So it can't represent formic acid. Are we following that? Any questions so far? No. Again, all this is is understanding molecular weight. If you can add up atoms, you can determine the molecular weight. And if, if you got a periodic table, you can add up the atoms, right? The, the atomic mass for each atom is listed on the periodic table. So let's take the same spectrum. I actually want to copy this so we don't have to keep scrolling back up. And let's do, um, let me put it on a blank page. Let's do ethanol. All right, because we've already seen that this can't fit formic acid. So ethanol is, I'm going to write it out, CH3. And let me not do that. Let me write it, write it in Lewis form. All right. So this is ethanol. All right. And if we look at ethanol, we can, let's see, where do you think we can break this up? What would you do? Right, of course, we can fragment it here. That's, that's no problem. And you can see here carbon, each carbon is 12, each hydrogen is one. So this is 29 for the two, the CH2 and the CH3 total, and then 17 for the oxygen. Or the, or, or the OH. And so that, that's where my mass of 46 is coming from. All right. Okay, so we could break off the oxygen. What would that give us? Is that right? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Well, if, I, if I cleave the OH bond, and I have a hydrogen and what's left, the uh, ethoxide, that's what I would get. And those are the masses. All right, can I cleave here? Russell? Yes. What did you say the mass for the oxygen was? 16. Okay. All right, if I cleave at the OH bond, I'm left with this. And this, and I'm gonna make that the radical, I'll make that the cation. Anybody disagree with that?
and then this is what 17 and 29 yes or no yes mm -hmm. and then i could also those carbon carbon bonds are pretty um uh, they're stable but if you fry them enough with that electron beam you can break those too so if i cleave here I'm, I'm gonna get this and I'll make that a hey, hold up. I'll make that the right radical. And then I'm gonna get also in addition to that, let me move this over some. So I can have room. I'll get that plus this. So CH two OH, and I'm gonna make that the cation. With the, where the plus charge will be on that carbon. Anybody disagree with that? No. Okay. So this is fifteen, and this is thirty-one. So you can see now, with all of these fragmentations, I can account for each one of these peaks. There's a peak at there's a peak at fifteen right that corresponds to this fragment as a peak at 29 which will correspond to uh this fragment right here and as a peak at 31 which one which is going to correspond to this fragment are y'all following and then of course 46 is my parent 45 will be the parent minus a proton and then 47 would be the parent plus one or the isotope P. So that's how we could look at this and say, okay, this has to be the spectrum for ethanol. This can't be the spectrum for formic acid, even though they got the same molecular weight. It's the fragmentation part that matters. All right, questions about that, about anything? No. Is this fairly straightforward? Are y'all feeling confident? Yes, it is. I understand it. All right. All right. So let's go. Let me go back to the PowerPoint and we're going to pick right back up. So we know where the parent peak is and the base peak and all that good stuff and the M plus one peak and the 45. We know it's, it's the parent minus one. All right. So here it, on this slide, there's some different fragmentation patterns that are shown, right? So if you have a, a branched alkane, like in number one, then the branch points cleave off first, right? They cleave faster. And you get these type, these two frag. If you cleave it here, you would get these two fragments right here, right? If you have a alkene present, then you get allylic cleavage. Remember that, that term, allylic, it's adjacent to an alkene. So you can see right here, this carbon and this carbon, that's where your cleavage takes place, right? And one of them is a radical, the other one is a cation. If you have hetero atoms present, nitrogen, oxygen, uh, sulfur, so on and so forth, you get <coughs> one of the cleavage patterns you get is alpha cleavage, right? And that's, you can see right here, you just cleave here on this side or on this side, and then you'll get two fragments. So what I want you to do, I want you to take, I'm gonna pause the recording too, so it won't be so much blank space. I want you to look at number one, and actually I can, I can bring this in. I want you to look at number one, and I want you to draw the fragments that you would get from cleaving on the left and on the right. So take a couple of seconds and do that. And I'm gonna import this into Notability so we can show them, show the fragments. Anybody got the first uh, set of fragments? Let's 
I think I do. Okay. Uh, hold up. Why are you going to import? Oh, here it is. What did you get? Can I draw it or? Yeah, if you want to annotate the screen, go right ahead. I think the security will allow that. Okay. 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 So you cleave you you you're showing the, the cleavage that happens on the left, yes? Yes, on the left side. All right. Good. And then which one would you think would be the cation and which one do you think would be the radical? Um, I think the cation will be the one with the OH. Good. And and the reason for that, if you think about stability, right? If you put a plus charge on the carbon right here, then that can be stabilized by resonance. So you're you're right. Uh and you know that a primary, this will be a prime end up being a primary cation, which is unstable and that's not good, right? Uh anybody want to take a crack at the other fragmentation pattern for, that happened on the right. Don't all jump at once now, we might crash the internet. Sure. All right. So we got that fragmentation, and then the other one would be here you have a two carbon chain, so a CH2. CH3, which would correspond to that. And then you have the rest of that molecule like that. And we'll make that the cation again, and we'll make this the radical, right? So the, the mass of this molecule, let's see, let's see if we can figure that out. We got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So that'll be 72. And then we got three, five, seven, eight, 10, 12 hydrogens. And then the OH is gonna be 17. So what is that? 89 is 106. Is that all right? No. Wouldn't it be 14 carbons? I mean, 14 hydrogens? Uh, no, this one is, a, this is the CH right here. Let's okay. see. So it's three on, three on each end, so that's six, and then the, the vertices are CH2s. So six, eight, 10, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, because you got three CH2s in there, so it'd be 13. All right. So 85 and 17, is that 102? 
grants per mole. Is that right? All right. So if we were to look over here, what would the mass, what do you think? Let's let's calculate the mass of the two fragments. So this has a CH3, a CH2, and then uh, another CH2. So what would that be? 15, 14, and 14, 28, 15, would that be 43? Is that right? Yeah, it'll be 43. Mm -hmm. And then so by default, the other piece should be what? 59? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the total has to be uh, right. Good. Are y'all following that? And it's say it'll be the same thing here. This is 29 grams per mole. And so the other fragment, that looks so sloppy. The other fragment will have to be 73. 73. That's exactly right. Following? Yes. All right. Same thing for the, the second example, uh, where you would cleave adjacent to the nitrogen, the NH2, those that, that alpha position. You get the same fragments, but it will be NH2 instead of OH, right? So the molecular weight is going to be a little bit different for, actually, it won't be, because nitrogen, I think, is 15, and then two hydrogen to 17. So yeah, that's really you really gonna get the same masses, just a uh, you just have a different hetero atom. All right, any questions so far? That's four nitrogen is fourteen. My bad, not fifteen. So that'd be one oh one. So the NH two will be sixteen. So the, the mass here will be, the total mass here will be 101. All right. And so with this, because the oxygen by itself is 16. So you can, you can, uh, I'll have this um, uploaded and then you can take a crack at those. I actually have a mass spec handout this handout on uh, Blackboard, but I just didn't unlock it. So I'll make sure it's unlocked so you can work through the rest of those. All right, uh, there's only one other cleavage pattern that I wanted to talk about. And let me, I had to go back to the PowerPoint for that. And it is uh, dehydration, which is the loss of water, right? So yeah, if you have a a hydroxyl group, one of the cleavage patterns that's possible is dehydration, where you just lose H2O and form a double bond, all right? So you can actually look for, in the mass spec, you can look for the appearance of water, which has a mass of 18 grams per mole. Um, so we're gonna, I'm, we're gonna stop here because it's 956, but what I'll do, uh, there's a, a couple of problems in here that we're gonna walk, walk through. So I want to do that on Wednesday for part of the class. And then I think the second part of the class, we'll just do like a QA. and a And then on Friday, that's when we'll start uh, with that, with those reactions. So I'll send you some videos about that uh, probably Wednesday. All right. Anybody have any questions about anything that we talked about today? No, sir. Yeah, I think it's a pretty straightforward uh, treatment. And again, I didn't want to get too deep in the weeds with it. But I think we got a good overview. We're going to look at a, few, a, couple, <laughs> a couple of other things with this. And then uh, we're going to move on to another topic. And again, the uh, NMR stuff, that exam is going to be on uh, Friday. It'll be on Blackboard. No lockdown or anything like that. I think the last test and the final, we're going to have to use uh, responders for those two. But the next test won't be. I still need. I still need to um, 